Wednesday and her classmates kidnap Tyler, and Wednesday tortures him to make him confess. Disagreeing with her methods, her classmates alert Principal Weems, and Wednesday is arrested. At the police station, Tyler secretly confesses to Wednesday that he is the monster. Fed up with Wednesday's behavior, Weems expels her from Nevermore. Wednesday visits Eugene at the hospital, whose description of the figure he saw at the monster's cave matches Miss Thornhill, a teacher at Nevermore. Weems, disguised as Tyler, and Wednesday get Thornhill to confess that she is Laurel Gates and manipulated Tyler into killing the victims as part of her scheme to resurrect Joseph Crackstone and wipe out all outcasts. However, Gates kills Weems and subdues Wednesday. Using Wednesday's blood, Gates resurrects Crackstone and leaves Wednesday to die, but Goody appears to heal her. Enid, having transformed into a werewolf form, defeats Tyler in his hide form while Crackstone breaches Nevermore. With help from Bianca, Wednesday destroys Crackstone and Eugene helps defeat Gates. Xavier is released from prison. Tyler is detained and Wednesday departs Nevermore, which is closing for the remainder of the semester. Thanks for stopping by the Search T channel. I am Search T. And that is the synopsis of episode 8 of season 1 of Wednesday. This one's titled A Murder of Woes. And what a way to finish this season. This is the season finale, of course. And things were tied up and we found out uh, the questions that were... The answers to the questions that were, you know, bugging me and were making me think, you know... Who's the beast? You know, the monster. Who is behind the monster? What's going to happen to Wednesday? Is the prophecy going to come true? Are we going to see the return of Joseph Crackstone and the surprises, the unfortunate deaths that we saw in this one? And the realization as to who's who in this uh, episode. I like the way it ended. It lets me think what's going to be taking place in the season two. Because it seems like once they found out who was the master of the beast, you would think that they would use that as a way to go into that in episode, I mean, in season two. Especially once we found out who. Laurel Gates is because we find out that Laurel Gates is still alive and she resurrects Joseph Crackstone so you would think that they would do use that as a way to go further into season 2 who knows what they're going to do are they going to go and show more of her at home but then again, they're only sitting out a semester because of what happened and everything like that. So they shut the school down early. But uh, let's get into the recap and let's get into the review of this um, episode. Now, we all saw what happens. What happened at the last uh, episode where she got the vision that the beast is Tyler. Now, in this episode, they kidnapped Tyler. And the uh, nightshades were there. You know, they were there to um, Bianca and Ajax and the others, you know, Yoko. But they quickly backed out and said, we're not, we didn't agree on this. You know, what's her name? Wednesday wanted to torture Tyler and get answers out of him. She had tasers, she had a knife in her hand, a hammer, and... She's in the middle of doing that, but she didn't know that uh, Bianca and them, you know, told Weems. She called the sheriff, the police, and Sheriff uh, Gil Galpin, of course, is the one who arrested and uh, brought Wednesday into the, what do you call it, into the police station. Now, the whole time, Tyler is pretty much saying that, what are you doing? You're crazy. It's not me. I'm not the monster. How could you think that? Because, of course, we saw she had all the evidence and she pinned the evidence on Xavier. 
she even tried to apologize to Xavier, but he wasn't having it, and I don't blame him. Because pretty much everybody thinks that if you're hanging around uh, Wednesday, she's toxic. She's going to get you in trouble. We saw what happened when they went into the uh, Gates um, mansion, and she almost got, she could have gotten Enid and, uh, you know, Xavier killed. Because the beast was there. That's where they found out that uh, Laurel Gates was uh, alive. Good thing in this thing is that, uh, well, the bad thing first is, of course, Tyler does secretly confess to Wednesday that he indeed is the monster. Which is kind of wicked and kind of like downright evil. He, he seemed to look, enjoy it. He seemed to be like, yeah, you wanted to know and now you know. But then we go to the good, and that is uh, Eugene. Seeing Eugene back is great. He survived the attack, and even from his hospital bed, he had some vital information. That uh, he had a description. He had he noticed um, something peculiar, something unique about the person that set aflame or set ablaze the cave that had evidence and all that stuff. And the shoes were red, and the shoes belonged to. Call it, um, I always forget her name. What's her name? Uh, what's her name? Uh, eesh. I always forget her name. Christina Ricci. Yeah, Miss Thornhill. And we didn't find out that Miss Thornhill is in fact, she's in fact Laurel Gates. And her plan all along, you know, she had Tyler, who was the beast. They would kill people and they would take a body part here and there. And the reason why is because she is going to resurrect Joseph Crackstone so he can continue that mission that he had initially. That was to get rid of all the outcasts. But of course, we know that, that Goody, Goody Adams is the one who stopped him and killed him and prevented him from doing that. So you have all those body parts and she needed um, Wednesday and needed her blood in order to pretty much set everything in motion and be, I guess, the she's the key to resurrecting Joseph Crackstone, her blood, because she is a descendant and that's what they needed. Remember that uh, Goody actually told her that you're the key. And we're wondering what does that mean, you know? But she was part of a res of a prophecy. You know, she even had that um, picture that she got from that book. It shows Joseph Crackstone and it shows, um, you know, so her and her there too. So, you know, there's that. But the way they got her to confess or even to reveal that she was um, Laurel Gates, you know, Thornhill is uh, the shape-shifting uh, abilities of uh, Principal Weems. And she shape-shifted into Tyler. And you see that very, very like, kind of like an old-school way of a transformation. Like we see in old-school kind of movies where you see one person and when a person passes by, you see the other person. They, they would do that in classic horror films. I guess it's a way to save on money if you not, don't have too much money on some visual effects you can do it that way slide a hand kind of thing side of a uh, frame and pitch side of picture i guess what you want to call it uh but that was pretty uh slick and you know she's confronted and she had that what do you call that the nightshade in a in in, in a uh syringe and before anything can go any further, she stabs Weems in the neck and causes her to, you know, pretty much foam at the mouth and poison all coming out of her mouth. And right away, Wednesday knew what it was. And unfortunately, she dies. And she knocks out Wednesday and then does the whole thing of cutting her hand and putting her hand on a symbol. And it totally just electrocutes. And, well, what if, not electrocutes, but it totally... You see electricity going through each jar of body parts. And before you know it, here comes uh, the resurrection and the return of uh, Joseph Crackstone. But the thing about it is, is that 
he's he, he, he he's resurrected he looks at um Wednesday and thinks that's goody and he stabs her and leaves her for dead but then goody Adams comes in and she tells Wednesday that her neck the, the necklace that she got from her mom is actually a way for goody to pass through the body of Wednesday and heal her but the unfortunate thing is that if she does that Wednesday will no longer see Goody after that. She made a sacrifice, Goody did, and she saved her descendant. And then we see a great fight, not a real, a real well uh, filmed time, a choreographed fight scene between Wednesday and Joseph Crackstone. It wasn't something to knock you off your seat, but at the same time, it was a pretty decent, uh, you know, clash there. Classic Goody versus Evil kind of thing. And we see Bianca come in and stab him in the back. Now it was told to Wednesday that she, he needs to stab him in the in his dark heart. Be good, he was the one that told her that. And after he's distracted by that, and he knocks Bianca like hundred feet back. Good on her because she made her sacrifice to do that, and she she turned out okay. She didn't get hurt or anything. And then Wednesday comes in and stabs him. He dissolves, turns into ash. And then in comes uh, Thornhill or Lowell Gates with a gun looking to finish Wednesday because she said, well, we, since Crackson wasn't able to kill all of these, I'll, I'll take care of you. I'll take you out at least. And then here you see like a bug. And I'm thinking, what is that? What is that? And I run away. I said, oh, that's a bee. Oh, here comes Eugene. And then Eugene was there. The bees attack Laurel Gates and she's taken down, taken out. Don't know what happened to her because you don't you don't see her um, afterwards. I was thinking the same thing about Tyler because Tyler was shot by his dad and he went back to his former self. He even said to the beast, "Tyler, is that you? Is that could that be really could that re could that really be you?" He shoots him and then he ends up reverting back to form, covered in blood. And then later on, we see him in the back of a like a a unit a squad squad unit. Like a van, SWAT team around him. He's chained, but then he turns into the the monster. So I'm thinking he escaped, maybe. Hopefully those chains are reinforced uh, galvanized steel or something like that. You know what I mean? And then I like the course of it. Of course, uh, let's let's just go back to the one of the a really good fight scene. Something that I, I don't know how many people were looking forward to it, but I didn't know how much I wanted this until I saw it. Enid. She finally turns, but she turns at the right time when she's needed. And she turns, she wolves out, you know, and she becomes what I'm pretty sure if her mom finds out, she's going to totally just love her daughter again or really love her daughter, which is kind of sad. That, but it's because she couldn't wolf out like her brothers, that her mom kind of looks at her like a black sheep. And she turns into a wolf and she takes on Tyler as the monster and takes his ass out. And really, really does her job, and she saves Wednesday. And that was really, really cool. And we got to see at the end when everybody was okay. Unfortunately, uh, Weems passed away. She died. She got killed. But we see Ina just go over to Wednesday, gives her a hug. Wednesday is kind of like stiff. Her arms are out to the side. And then she just figures out oh, what the heck. And then gives her a hug back and you know it really it did touch me and it made me kind of uh you know almost almost tear up you know but uh it was really a good moment because they're true friends whether wednesday knows it or not that's her that's her true friend that's her best friend i think at this point i think now she knows that's her there's a true friend we see uh you know xavier charges are all dropped he gives her a phone cell phones he says welcome to the 21st century or like that and then he says well my number's there already and she's like she's like you know you think you're honest you think i'm gonna call you and he's like maybe not but you can text me and then she's just and she just looks at him and goes bye xavier and then goes and then lurch is seen in the front of the car driving wednesday away and wednesday gets a text she looks at it and it's like something there that says, I'm watching you. And it has like pictures of her with uh, 
Tyler and then with her and Xavier and then it has like a little animated thing, a gif, a gif or something like that. And you see her and all of a sudden there's, a, there's like an arrow goes through the gif's head. So she has a stalker, she has somebody that's keeping her eye on, keeping his eye on her, like her eye on her. So that's going to lead into uh, season two, I guess. Um, I just, like I said, I just don't know what's going to happen with season two. I wonder what it's going to be because this thing really was a very, very well written, well acted. I love the story. I love the who's who, the who done it type of thing and the ending of it. But maybe they could have uh, extended it and revealed who was Laurel Gates. And then maybe in, se in the second season, you'll see they'll battle Laurel Gates and she gets away. And then in the second season, that's when she resurrects Crackstone, and then you have them battling Crackstone because Crackstone was there and then he was gone. He came in, and I guess it was just a way to provide a and an, an, no, I want to call it um, an antagonist for Wednesday to fight, I guess, because it's like really quick. It's like he was there and then he was done. He was uh, he was gone. He was this this, you know, he was uh. What's the word? But he was um, dispatched. I mean, what's the word? When someone uh, just finally gets rid of somebody, you know? But that's what she did. She got rid of them and she just killed them, disintegrated them, and turned them, reduced them to ash. And he ain't gonna be around no more. He ain't coming back no more. Oh, well, who knows? But uh, yeah, I mean, I liked it. Um, I had my suspicions as to who the who Laura Gates was, who the really who the monster was. I thought. You know, Christina Ricci's character, uh, Thornhill, was the monster. Because she remember how she popped up after Eugene died? I mean, not Eugene died. After Eugene was attacked, and there she was. And then you have Xavier popping up when, you know, when, when, uh, what do you call it? When uh, Tyler was attacked. But you find out that Tyler attacked himself, you know, slashed himself, just to make it look like he got attacked by the monster, but then he was the monster all along. If you look at him, he looks like such an innocent guy when he's Tyler, but then when he revealed that he was the monster, it's like a complete turn. His eyes looked uh, very, very just different. And he looked intense, and he looked like a, a, a true villain. And, uh, you know, good job on the actor who played him. I mean, he was able to do that. And I just love the twist. I love everything about this uh, show. It's like it kept you guessing. I mean, some people were thinking, okay, I think it's... I think, it's, <clears throat> I think it's this person. I think it's this person, but you never really knew. At least, at least with me, I never really knew. And then, am I surprised? Oh yeah, sure. You know, she's Thornhill. I mean, Thornhill is Laurel Gates. You know, she supposedly drowned 20 years ago, but apparently she didn't. And resurrecting a, a descendant, uh, you know, Joseph Crackstone to continue his mission to getting rid of... Um, we call it getting rid of <clears throat> the outcast. And then what I liked also is I like Bianca in her how she does that, how she talks, you know, how she what do you call that whispers? What's what's the name of her thing? Her her power, but you see it coming out visually visually to see it come out when she says something to tell to make somebody do something. And she was doing that to even some of the people that were the head of the dorms or whatever and when they were trying to get him out to get him away from the uh, area because Craxton was, you know, was there and he was looking to, to kill all of them. She's able to talk this guy into um, telling everybody to get out, get out, you know. So that was a really good thing. Uh, nice to see her powers um, finally. I'm not, you know, we never seen it during the whole course of this show until this episode. Unless like, I missed something, but I don't think I did. But uh, it was a good season finale, nonetheless. I like the the journey from episode one until now, and then where they got to, and the you know the finale, and uh, you know everything that took place towards the end of the series, at the end of this I mean season, this episode. So yeah, I mean I got nothing to complain about. This was really a great great season first season i'm looking forward to the second one but like i said i wonder where they're gonna go and i wonder what they're gonna do but i'm open to it and i'm just can't wait till it uh comes up and uh, can't wait till they drop this season but uh anyway uh that's all i can talk about that's all i can remember or think to talk about 
hopefully I covered everything. So, well, that's that. Um, anyway, uh, that's my uh, video. So for those of you who stopped by and checked this out, I appreciate it. Thank you for your support. I appreciate it. And in closing, as always, take care.